Our world is growing faster than farmers can feed it. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization predicts that 9.7 billion people will inhabit the planet by 2050. That's two and a half billion more than today. How are we going to keep the world from looking like this? How are we going to feed a few billion more people when nearly 800 million are hungry right now? In 1798, Thomas Malthus published an essay on the principle of population, where he observed that an increase in the nation's food production improved the quality of life for its citizens. But any improvement was temporary because it led to population growth. Malthus theorized that, quote, the power of population is indefinitely greater than the power in the earth to produce subsistence for man. Eventually, earth wouldn't be able to feed everyone, a Malthusian trap. But this is only the case if you ignore innovation that allows us to produce food more effectively. Humans have always been able to increase the supply in proportion to population. From ancient Egypt and China to Mesoamerica and the Roman Empire, societies innovated methods and tools to grow, harvest, and produce enough food to feed their new worlds. Our food had been grown on the backs of animals, women, and men until 1901 when Dan Albone designed the first commercially successful tractor. Suddenly, machines empowered farmers to tend as much land as they could imagine. But still, innovation allowed us to produce more. Norman Burlog developed a dwarf wheat that had a stronger stock to keep heavier yields of grain from falling over and rotting, exponentially increasing the supply of wheat across the world. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for his work. To keep up with our imaginations, we filled farmers' almanacs. We've improved irrigation, we've engineered weather and pest-resistant plants, but still, we need more radical innovations to feed the world. Enter the digital age. We've arrived at a level of technical maturity that matches farming and human needs, launching a wave of human improvement. The future of farming is happening now. Big data, machine learning, smart connected equipment, the internet of things and autonomous technologies allow us to understand fields and crops at the macro level and all the way down to a single row in the middle of a massive field. Farmers in the near future will operate tractors and drones from tablets as they work and collect data across their land. Cloud computing systems will collect and process this data, and then the farmers will analyze it with additional inputs from sensors and fields to predict and manage their crops growing cycles. Farm equipment manufacturers like CNH Industrial have unveiled autonomous tractors that can work around the clock plowing, planting, harvesting, and transporting, all while gathering continuous data on soil and crop conditions. These self-driving tractors can make their own decisions, such as reacting to weather patterns and automatically moving to another field. Right now, autonomous drones do more than just take aerial photos. They quickly gather data on crop health, quantity, and detect stresses like parasites and fungi, or monitor livestock numbers and grazing trends. New technology comes with new anxieties, but the benefits of automation and data-driven farming impact every human. The future of farming has the potential to give everyone access to sustainable, high quality, and cheaper food. We don't have to get caught in Malthusian trap. We don't have to have millions or billions hungry, but we do have to innovate today. The greatest minds of every generation, the Malthuses, the Albons, the Borlaugs, they push society into new, better directions. They thought above their weight class. Research institutions and businesses like CNH are doing that work now. But we need brilliant minds to develop the apps and algorithms that will analyze the data from the autonomous tractors and drones and then turn it into practical techniques. We need farmers to implement and governments to allow the future of farming. If we're all working together, then we'll never be hungry. <laughs>